Carrie here with Waterlogged. Today, we're gonna to talk about blennies. All right, today we are going to talk about blennies. Now, before I get into it, I'm going to let you know that some of these blennies that we're talking about today are actually considered fang blennies. And obviously it's because they have fangs and those fangs are actually venomous. They use these as a method of self-defense, but I'm bringing it up because you should probably be safe when handling them. They're probably not intentionally um, going to bite you, but they, like I said, use it as a self-defense mechanism. So use caution when handling them. Now, if they are a fang blenny, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know, but I will also be denoting it as I usually do. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, one of the more common species that I've seen in local fish stores is the Lodmore Blenny. Now these guys are pretty dull and drab and not the most colorful fish that you're gonna keep in your tank. However, they do pack quite the punch when it comes to keeping your tank clean. Lawnmower Blenny kind of is a good indicator by their name that they're gonna clean up a lot of that algae. Sometimes you might actually hear them be referred to as algae blennies as well. Another blenny similar to the lawnmower blenny is the Molly Miller blenny. Now, I've actually heard rumors, I haven't seen this myself, that these guys will actually eat Aptasia and cyanobacteria in addition to taking care of some of that algae in your tank. So that's something to keep in mind if you are looking for a new blenny. Next up is significantly more colorful, the Canary Blenny. These guys are absolutely beautiful yellow colors and they are actually one of the Fang Blennies. Now, one thing that's cool about them is that they might actually reproduce in your tank and you can actually buy them as a captive bred species. Next up is the striped blenny. Now these guys are another one of the fang blennies. Now they like to cruise around the rock, rock work and they will do a little bit of hunting while they're in your tank. So make sure that when you're putting them in there, you got some well-established um, rock scape for them to enjoy. Next, we have the Forktail Blenny. This is another one of those Fang Blennies, and it's actually another one of the captive bred species that you can find. Now, I like buying captive bred fish for several reasons. One, they tend to be a little bit healthier overall. A lot of times, because they are captive bred, they're usually already eating when you get them, as opposed to some of the wild caught species that might not necessarily already be eating. So that takes some of the um, issues out for you when you get them into your home tank. But another reason I like captive bred is because it reduces the stress on wild populations. All right, next up is going to be the red or the orange spot blenny. These guys are a good bit more colorful. They're really, really beautiful fish, but they tend to be a little bit aggressive. So use caution when you're putting them in your tank. Next, we have the Smith blenny. This is another captive bred species of fang blenny. Um, they're pretty small and they'll actually be really good if you've got a nano tank that you're looking for a blenny to put in. This blenny is the tail spot blenny. It's probably one of my favorite ones out there. I really love them because a lot of times when you see them in tanks, they're kind of like poking their heads up out of rock work. These guys like to hide in and around the work, rock work. So make sure when you're putting them in a tank, you give them a lot of fun spaces to hide. Our last blenny today is the Midas blenny. This is another one that is absolutely beautiful in color. And today these photos that I have are actually collected from a diver out in the wild. They were observing these um, Midas blennies. They weren't sure what it was. Um, so this one is actually one that's kind of displaying cording colors, which is not necessarily something that we see in our home aquariums. But I think these photos give you a pretty good idea of the variety of different colors that you might see out in the wild. All right, that's all of the different species that we have to talk about today, but let's go ahead and discuss how big they're gonna get and what tank sizes that you need. So most of these blennies are gonna stay fairly small. They're not gonna get anywhere over five inches. So you can probably keep them in a 30 gallon tank or larger. Um, they're gonna do relatively well. The more space that you give them, the more hiding places that you give them, they're going to thoroughly enjoy that. All right, let's go to the kitchen and discuss some of the nutritional requirements that your blennies might need. Let's talk a little bit about diet and nutrition for your blennies. Now I'm curious, before I get into this, let me know if you've ever kept a blenny before, what its favorite foods, food was. Leave a comment down below. Now, 
A minute ago, I mentioned that a lot of these blennies that you're gonna keep in the tank are providing a service to your aquarium in that they are cleaning a lot of the algae and some of the unwanted pesky algae out of your tank. And that is great, but you as an aquarist need to be mindful that especially if you've got a very efficient cleanup crew and they take care of all of that algae really quickly that you are supplementing that with something else in their diet. So just kind of keep a watchful eye as the algae grows in your tank and how fast they take care of it to know how much you're going to need to supplement that. Now, all of the blennies on this list today are both omnivores and herbivores, so I've got a mix of foods for them, but it's primarily going to be heavy on the vegetable side of things today. I'm gonna go ahead and break things down into the dry and flake foods, the DIY and gel foods, the frozen foods, and some specialty foods. So let's go ahead and get started with the dry foods. In some of these videos, I like to talk about flakes, but if you pay attention to where they're hanging out at in your tank, you're gonna notice that they're gonna be on the bottom and maybe in the middle of the water column. While they might go up to the surface, that's not primarily where they're hanging out, which is why I'm gonna tell you to maybe steer clear of flake foods. Not that they're bad, but pellets are probably a little bit more where you need to be. So look for a pellet that has maybe a little bit more moisture content that will fall through the water column down to the bottom or will hang out in the water column. First up is going to be the Cobalt Aquatics Marine Pellet. So this one's good. It's got a nice small size, which is something you want to be watchful of. Make sure that you get a pellet that's about half the size of your fish's mouth. That way they don't have any issues eating it. These guys are good. It's got a mix of those greens and the meats that the blennies will need. These next two are both New Life Spectrum products. If you've seen these videos before, you know that I'm a big fan of their foods. First off is the Algae Max. Now this one is great. I've already mentioned that these blennies eat a lot of vegetables and this one has about nine different types of seaweeds and algae in there. So it's gonna be a great option for your blennies. Another one is the New Life Spectrum Probiotics. As an overall pellet food, this is probably one of my favorites. And again, it's got those meats, but it's also got some of those vegetables. Not quite as much as the Algae Max, but they're definitely in there. And one good thing about these products is that they come in a variety of different sizes, so you can get exactly what you need for the fish in your tank. Now this next one is the PE Mysis pellets. Now, I've mentioned this in the past videos, you're not gonna wanna feed this every single day, but it is a great treat for your fish. And this guy comes in both the pellet form and the frozen, so you can get that in the big sheet pack, which I'll show you in a second, or in some of the blister packs. This next one is a new food. This is the Nios Algae Food. Um, the reason I'm mentioning it is because these guys are herbivores. They eat lots of algaes and veggies. So this is a good one for you to go ahead and give a try. All right, let's move on to our DIY and gel foods. Now, if this seems a little bit foreign to you, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link up in the video and below in the description, but I've actually made a video on how to make some of these gel and the DIY foods. So go ahead and check that out if you're curious. Now, the first one is going to be the Dr. Tim's Beneficial Fish Food. I like this one and all of the gel and dough mixes because you can add any medications that you might need in there, and it's really easy. This one's a natural fish food, so it's gonna have a lot of those naturally occurring uh, nutrients that your fish will need. Next up is another New Life Spectrum product. This is the Algae Max Gel. So it's the same thing as those pellets I mentioned a minute ago. The only difference is it comes in a powder. You're able to blend it up and you can put it on the rock work and somewhere in the tank. It will simulate the natural feeding behaviors of those blennies as they're scraping the food off the rocks. All right, let's go ahead and move on to frozen food. So first off is going to be the PE Mysis. I mentioned that a second ago. This is one of the big sheet packs that you can use. Also, it comes in the blister packs as well. Again, that's something that you're gonna wanna stick to maybe once or twice a week for a snack. Next is going to be the San Francisco Bay brand, the Reef Multipack. Now this one has the Marine Cuisine and the Coral Cuisine in there. Both of those are going to have a good variety of not only brine shrimp that these blennies need and love, but also some of those vegetables as well. And this is, as all blister packs are, wonderful because you only have to break out a small little amount. It's already pre-portioned. So this is a good option, especially if you've got some reef tanks. All right, we have the brine shrimp. Brine shrimp is a great food for the blennies. It's really small, it's gonna be perfect for their little tiny mouths, and it's got a lot of nutrition in there for them that they will appreciate. 
Our last frozen food might be a little bit strange, the Pygmy Angel formula. Now the reason I'm showing you this one is because if you look at the ingredients, brine shrimp, that's the first ingredient on there. Um, then we have dried kelp, dried kelp powder, and then they've got a bunch of different um, vegetables and meats in here. So even though it says Pygmy Angel on the front, it will work great for your blennies. And it's another one of those that comes in a blister pack. So consider this as an option. Now your blennies are going to be eating a lot of algae in the tank and if they are really efficient they might eat through all of it which is why it's a good reason for you to supplement with some nori. So there's a bunch of different varieties that are out on the market. Um, Two Little Fishies has a bunch of different colored so you can have the red seaweed, the purple, the green. Um, it's entirely your preference so consider getting some of those in addition to maybe a nori clip or one of those feeder containers. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some of the issues that your blennies might encounter. Now, unlike some of these other fish videos that I've done, the main things and the main problems that I see when it comes to blennies, number one is jumping. Can't tell you how many times I've seen blennies jump. They jump if they're spooked. Sometimes they just jump for fun. So the remedy to that is making sure that you have a nice secure fitting lid on the top of your tank. You can either purchase one of the kits. Marine Depot has several different DIY kits that you can design to fit your specific tank, you can buy the ones that come with your tank. Now something else when it comes to securing openings is being mindful of your overflow. Can't tell you how many times I've seen blennies stuck in overflows. They've either somehow gotten through the weir teeth or jumped over the weir teeth. So if your tank has a little bit of a gap, just be mindful of that. Know that if it's possible, they may end up in your overflow and they're a pain in the butt to catch. So do yourself a favor and make sure you have that uh, screened off if you can. All right, the next issue that I commonly see with blennies is malnutrition. Now I mentioned it several times earlier that a lot of these guys are grazing and feeding throughout the day. Now, if they have competition from the cleanup crew, if you're clean, if you got a lot of crabs and snails and they're really efficient, these guys might not be getting enough food. So one thing that you can do is you can install an auto feeder on your tank. Um, this is probably one of the more simple ones that are out there on the market. It's really easy. You can set it to feed several times throughout the day. That will ensure that your blennies are getting enough food that they need. Something else you can consider doing is putting some copepods in your, seeding your tank with copepods and putting one of those pod habitats. That way there'll always be some live food in the tank for them to chase after. Now, recently I've been talking about preventative measures. So one of the preventative measures that you can do is adding vitamins to their food. Now, I talked a lot about different pellet foods that you can have today. And if you've seen some of the fish nutrition videos that I've made, you'll know that you need to add some vitamin C and some vitamins back into those pellet foods, especially after they've been open for a while because those vitamins actually do evaporate. And vitamin C especially is really important for your fish is immune health. So consider um, vitamin C, vitamin C by Brightwell Aquatics. This is a really great one. It's one I use on a regular basis. All right, let's go ahead and move on to enrichment. So blennies, they're a funny, curious bunch of fish. A lot of times you'll see them hiding in and around the rock work. So providing a good rockscape for them to play in, for them to hunt in, um, for them to clean algae in is one way that you can enrich their lives. Now we've talked a lot about food when it comes to blennies, but something else you can do is using things like these uh, nori clips. There's a huge variety of them that are out on the market. You can put some nori in there for them to eat and snack on throughout the day. You can switch it up with a bunch of different types of nori. Adding variety and changing up the food is one easy method of enrichment that is available out there. The next thing that you can do is another one that has to do with food. When you feed, this works really great with some of those um, frozen foods in the blister packs, you can put those foods in the tank, feed them in front of say a power head or your return. And what that does is it kind of disperses the food throughout the water column and it gives those blennies something fun to chase after just like they would their food in the wild. 
The next thing you can do, and I mentioned some of these gel and dough foods down in the kitchen, is you can put those along the rock work and that will simulate their natural feeding behaviors out in the wild. So that's something else fun that you can do to enrich their, their lives. Now I'm curious if you do anything to enrich your Blenny's lives, please leave a comment below and let me know. I'm always interested to learn new methods of enrichment. The last method of enrichment, as always, is tank mates. So blennies tend to be pretty good in community tanks. They do very well in reef tanks. Now there are some species that will get aggressive towards others. So always make sure that you do your research before you buy fish, before you buy coral, before you put anything in your tank that goes with products as well. If you are looking for some help, check out Marine Depot's fish compatibility chart. It is a fantastic resource that is available to you for free. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know what your favorite fish is below, what video you would like to see. See you next time.